Hey everybody, today let's talk about how to create realistic Ivy for your projects. If you've ever messed with Ivy in D5, you'll notice that there's actually two categories. There's the static asset, which is literally a simple mesh that can be, you know, applied to any surface. But the problem is it doesn't look super realistic because it can clip through things. If you start to copy it and duplicate it, it begins to look samey samey because it's the same asset. That's the static asset. Then you may know that there's an asset that is actually procedurally generated. So what this means is based on a bunch of different parameters, it will cling to the surface of your model. So if you pay attention here, you see how this is wrapping this fireplace here and it's going over the window and it's wrapping around the gutter here. So this is the procedural system and watch this. If I hit random, it's going to give me a new seed or like a new generation of this flavor. And look at that, it turned the corner. So this is an intelligent system. So if I move this over here, right, and then hit random again, it should cling to the chimney. And it actually climbs all the way up and it goes to the roof. So this is, again, procedurally generated. So you're always going to get a fresh, unique IV asset instead of using the static ones. So how do you even do this? Let me delete this and I'll show you how. Let's go over to assets and right under model, you're gonna wanna go down to nature. So click that, go down to vine. And you'll see all these guys right here, procedurally generated, okay? Pay attention to this. These are the static assets, okay? So for example, I grab this out. This is static, it'll cling to my cursor. I can't do anything to it. I could scale it, you know, I could rotate it, but it's not, it's not procedural. So let's actually do that. So let's grab a procedural one, and I'm gonna drag it out. And you'll see, if you pay attention, there's this kind of like a blue screen. And if you saw it earlier on, there's a little arrow. Look at that little arrow right by the chimney. All right, so I'm gonna left click. And it's a little confusing at first, and I feel like this actually <laughs> gets a lot of people confused. Watch this. Right now, only this face is covered in blue. So if I were to hit generate, it would only apply here, but that's weird because I want it to apply to this face, turn here, and then go on the wall as well. So what you have to do is actually pull this out. I know it's gone, okay, don't freak out. Rotate it, and look at that, that's that arrow again. Think of it almost as like a projector screen or almost like a blanket, we want to wrap a surface. You need to make sure the rotation is rotated to the correct face. There's way, way too many times where people are like, hey, I can't get this Ivy thing to work and it's because it's just facing the wrong thing or it's in the asset or your model, right? If it's in here, it has nothing to cling to. So what you wanna do is actually bring this out. You see how I'm off the fireplace? I've rotated it, right? And now this will work. So how does this work? I could, if I'm feeling kind of lazy, just hit generate and it will generate within this box with the default settings, you know, some sort of IV model. And there you go. Let me delete the static one. And this is my procedural one. And it's actually done a nice job, right? It's clung to the sides of the fireplace, the main wall and everything. So this actually looks really good. So let's talk about some of the key features of this tool. So right off the bat, um, it does have a scale factor. So if you want it to affect a smaller area, obviously keep it small. If you want it to affect a larger area, boost this. So if I change this to 20, notice how my box got bigger. So let me rotate this so we could visualize this a little bit better, right? That's 20 and this is 10, okay? Smaller area and let me show you the difference. So let me hit generate for a 10 by 10 and then we'll do a 20 by 20. So that's 10 by 10, nice, small, cute little area. That's totally fine. The size does change here after you've, you've generated it because we're no longer talking about just the box. So I could change these values. So let's say I want this to be 4,000, right? Notice the area has increased. So my point there is you can use the scale transforms to actually affect how large of an area, okay? So the next thing I wanna point out is the scale. And I always like to use like a static asset or just reference photos like this to get an idea of the size of the leaf, okay? So look at this close up right here, all right? So pay attention to like how big the leaf is. And obviously the different species will, will affect this, but my point here is a scale of one is going to control how big the leaves are. If I shrink this, see how teeny these look? Like that doesn't look realistic based on the reference photos and based on the static, right? If I make it five, this doesn't look realistic. So my point is, you know, one and a little bit below, I think is like a really good realistic scale. 
okay? The next one is leaf density. Think of this as how full are your branches? So let me crank this to one. You can see we've got, you know, the ivy clinging around and it's got plenty of leaves. It looks pretty, pretty dense and this is good. If I crank it to zero, notice like how much more bare it looks, okay? So we're talking about bare versus very full, okay? So I'm gonna right click to reset that to 0.8. Then there's a leaf random angle. So let me zoom in and let me set this to zero. What this is doing is at zero, it's not going to randomize any of your leaves. But obviously if we're trying to make realistic ivy, it should be going in a bunch of different directions. So 0.8 and above is going to start rotating these leaves because everything in the real world doesn't go in one direction. This is going to randomize it, okay? So make sure you have that. Then there's length and width. These guys, very similar to the scale that I was talking about earlier. So watch this. If I were to increase the length, look at how far it starts going um, in a specific direction. So look at that. So now it's growing out that way. If I increase the width, it grows out even further, which is really cool. So if you want to you know, tweak it this way to get more or less of a, um, a spawn region, that's what this is perfect for. Then there's leaf color. So this is the hue. If I make it red, I'm gonna turn it red. If I bring it all the way down, it's gonna be darkened and basically just black. You could kind of like desaturate it by going this way if you want like some darker ivy, which in my opinion looks a little bit more realistic than often like this vibrant saturated color. So I would keep that a little bit low, okay? That way, a little desaturation. So once you have that and you're happy with these settings, you could just hit random and it will, you know, kind of randomize, basically regenerate a new seed um, based off of these values until you get what you like. And you can see this is doing like a phenomenal job. Like it's actually clinging to the soffit and then the gutter and then going over the roof and clinging up the roof. Like this is much more realistic than these static assets, okay? So if there's a rendering where you need kind of like the realism and this to mimic how Ivy's growing, use the procedural asset. If you're using something just like in the background, not really focal point, static assets, are totally fine. I mean, you've got pages and pages of this, but this is a fantastic asset because it's it's smart. I can move this anywhere across the house and you're going to see it's gonna start clinging to it. But it's not perfect. You can see here that it's just giving me some weird branches, no leaves. And often I solve this by just rotating it to be on the correct face. So let's try that one more time. So generate and there we go. So again, pay attention to what it's pointing at. I'll give you um, some some caveats to this. Right over here, I have a little Juliet balcony. If you don't know what that is, it's a fake balcony. Yes, people install fake balconies. I don't know, it looks pretty, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, you can't go on it. What I've noticed with this asset, let me hit random, on really like small assets, it doesn't really pick it up. And especially if they're close, you notice how there's like no ivy on the Juliet balcony? Look at that, I'll try that one more time. It's missing it, it's kind of ignoring it, okay? So my point is, if you have a really complex, like intricate little area, it might not work. So let me go over here, give you another example. Let's try randomizing again. Yeah, if it ever like freaks out and starts giving you that, that means it's, it's not working correctly. So this is my point, it's not gonna be perfect, okay? It does a good job if it's like a large face, but when it's these small little guys, it doesn't know what to do. Okay, so pay attention to that. This is where I would use those static assets. This is a better candidate. Okay, so like this would be better than this. It just, it can't handle these little um, these little models, which, you know, it's fine. I guess there, there's something in there, maybe to, maybe for the sake of performance that it doesn't uh, do that. So let me, let me move it to this wall. Again, that's that projector. Let me hit generate and it should work fine now. There we go, right? So again, my point is it works great on these like larger faces, um, but the small little details, not so much. There you go, it's working perfect. So you'll also see that there's this guy called energy saving mode. This, the simplest way I can explain it is like if you just need a quick down and dirty version of it, that will do it. And what it's doing is it's basically limiting the amount of like samples or the steps it calculates um, basically around the geometry and like where the branches should be. So this is going to kind of shrink how big it is. Um, and it's not going to go out as far as all the other um, settings I was showing you before. You know, it will, you know, when you crank these up, expand of course, but it's not as 
complicated, or in my opinion, as beautiful as energy saving mode off. So you see how we're getting a lot more detail. So let me do that one more time. There we go. So now it's going in all these different directions. Again, energy saving mode on, you know, it can go in different areas. It just, it won't be as precise. That's, that's basically all it's doing there. And it makes it a little bit faster because it doesn't have to calculate um, all the steps that it typically does. Right? So again, I'm not saying it's bad, but you'll see when I'm clicking here, it takes longer when I have it off. Um, but you know, it is also a little unpredictable. You know, you'll see that they, they do name it a beta, you know, beta asset. So sometimes you just have to hit random again, but if you want, the most realism, um, go with the procedural system, untick energy saving mode, and you'll be golden. Another thing I'll note is you can't actually save this asset. You can't like bake it as a static asset. So it is what it is. You can't reuse it on another project like this exact formation because it's always clinging to a new surface. So it's not like this where you could just put it anywhere. You do need to regenerate. Anyways, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you have any questions, comment below. And if you made it this far and you enjoy this content, please subscribe. See you next time.